Hello Pleasant Hill, welcome to the Tinkers and Thinkers Fair for 2018. I'm Samuel Chen. And I'm Izzy Triana, and I'd like to welcome Pleasant Hill's newest member to Teen Council. Congratulations, Samuel. Thanks, Izzy. Inspired by a night of a thousand inventions, Tinkers and Thinkers Fair is a fun, free family event filled with robots, drones, and much more. In addition to all the projects kids can work on, we'll also be taking a look at all the interesting and cool displays from our local Pleasant Hill entrepreneurs and educators. Some of the attractions that will be featured include a pedal-powered cycle-side carnival and paper rockets. Let's go take a look at what all of the things that are going on. I'm here with Patrick from the Pleasant Hill Library. So Patrick, can you tell me a little about this event? Yeah, this is our second big Tinkers and Thinkers Innovation Fair event here at Pleasant Hill Park. Uh, bigger than last year, better than last year. Um, and we're all having a blast out here. Tons of families at this free event uh, with everything from science and tech, engineering, math, and carnival rides made out of welded bicycles. Pretty, pretty fun. And why are events like this important to the community? Oh, so many reasons, but mostly it's just a great time for us to all come out and uh, come together. Uh, this event in particular uh, is just great for getting kids particularly excited about all the different possibilities that are out there, discovering new inventions and new ways of uh, making the world a better place with tech and science, um, and for some of them, maybe discovering a career down the, uh, down the way that might involve robotics or computer science or you know even chemistry or biology. You've come a long way from your Night of a Thousand Inventions. How are you come settling along in that? Yeah, so, um, you know, we were we did Night of a Thousand Inventions for like five years in the library, and it just obviously got so big that we had to move out. Um, but more than that, it was a way for us to uh, sort of reinvent the Night of Inventions, right? Uh, doing it on an afternoon, a sunny, beautiful day in the park, and teaming up with the amazing folks at Reckon Park so that this event could be bigger and better than it could possibly be just uh, with my team at the library. So yeah, it's it's uh, it's coming along great. I feel like we're growing steadily, adding new attractions, bringing in new exhibitors, new inventors, and of course, uh, lots of new families coming out uh, to experience the magic. What are some changes from last year compared to this year? Yeah, so um, mostly it's just bigger. We've added more people. Um, so like the folks behind us here, CycleSide are brand new. Um, the Contra Costa County Office of Education, uh, right? Some of our experienced educators coming out uh, to teach you some tricks in, in coding and in, uh, in circuitry. Um, yeah, and then, um, you know, of course we're bringing back some of the heavy hitters. we got our friends with the drones. Um, the library booth inside is, you know, we've got our robots again. Uh, this time we brought out some VR, some virtual reality headsets to try out. So yeah, just little things here and there, um, sprucing it up. Um, and we'll just keep doing that year over year. We'll, we'll add some more, uh, some more magic for the next year. What is the progress on the new library? Oh, things are coming along really well there. Um, we're going to get a, an update from the architects, uh, BCJ, really, really soon. Um, the final schematics for the library are almost in place. And I can tell you from what I've seen so far, it's going to be beautiful.
I'm here with Brian Weyer from the Cran Institute. How are you doing? Good. Uh, so tell us, what, why would you start the Cran Initiative? Was there something that inspired you to start it? Just seeing restaurants throw away their crayons mm -hmm. at the end of a meal with my kids. I see. So what was the purpose of, I, I believe uh, you create, you melt down crayons, old crayons that people throw away, and you recreate them into more triangle, uh, three-sided crayons that are more friendly for hospital patients, I believe? Correct. We start with old crayons that we then sort down and make new crayons. They're triangular shaped for dexterity reasons as well as they don't roll off the hospital beds. I see. So what's, what, what, do you find, what are you most proud of for starting the crayon initiative? What's it, what is Just seeing the kids smile when they get their crayons. I mean, that's mm -hmm. the best part. Several of these kids actually up here have passed, but the parents say that the last time they saw their kids smile was with our crayons. I see. Oh, no, no, it starts here. Oh, okay. You want it to look like that at the end. Oh, okay, so for one And these, all three of these things came from our brain I'm here with Council Member Michael G. Harris. How are you doing this morning? I am doing great. This is a wonderful event. I loved it last year and it's even bigger and better this year. Thinkers and tinkers are two of my favorite kind of people. Uh, I'm a scientist and a professor and I know the value of getting young people involved in science and scientific thinking early. Both of my daughters are scientists. This is a wonderful opportunity for kids of all ages to have fun with science because science is fun learn how to make things, learn how to, you know, learn how to do things, and hopefully it'll translate to maybe even college uh, majors and careers. But this is a wonderful event. I really appreciate all the organizers putting this together, and I look forward to seeing more of this in Pleasant Hill. We really need more of this kind of, of innovative, creative, uh, interactive programs. Thank you very much for uh, talking to me this morning, Sam. Uh, thank you very much, Councilmember <laughs> Harris. You basically answered all my questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. My pleasure. <laughs> I'm here with Mesa, an educational community at DVC. So, can you tell me a little more about it? Well, uh, Mesa, like you said, is a community on DVC where STEM students have the opportunity to have some professional growth. Now, how do they do that? Through things like internships. Uh, I was able to do an internship for research at UC Berkeley over the summer. Uh, we also have workshops that support STEM classes like calculus, biology, chemistry. Um, and we also have a variety of volunteer opportunities, and I'll let Emily kind of talk about more about those. So we volunteer at places like fairs, high schools, like College Park, where we mentor students, and like clubs such as robotics. We also have a um, professor here who actually provides us with help. We have a, a lot of faculty involvement in the MESA program. We have faculty who support the program by coming for additional tutoring, by offering special sections of their classes to 
gather the Mason students together and to bring uh, Mason students to events like this. Earlier today I've been doing uh, an experiment about elephant toothpaste. So we took the hydrogen peroxide and iodide, put them together with a little bit of detergent to release some gas, comes out in a lot of foam. And so we get uh, a flashy demonstration to uh, try to draw on the children. I think it's got you. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. Well, maybe not, we'll see. Go, team, go. I am! I'm basically being the boss right now. No, no, it's getting no, 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 yes. Now it's getting underneath. No, no, no. Turn them both off. You turn to your opponent, you shake hands, right? Good game. Good game. I'm here with Alvin, he's here with his very interesting heavy-duty drone. How are you doing, Alan? Good, Alvin. thank you so much. Yes. Doing great. So, can you tell us a little bit more about your drone, um, the design of it? It's, obviously, it's not your average everyday household drone. Just tell us more about it. Sure, absolutely. This uh, drone right here is uh, hand-built by myself. This is known as a hexacopter based off of hex six propellers. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I chose a six propeller as opposed to a four is for about redundancy. Mm -hmm. The modern flight controller today has the ability, so if one propeller flies off of the drone or gets broken or a motor breaks, breaks down, it can still safely operate with only five propellers. Mm -hmm. As opposed to having four propellers, one goes down, there's nothing to sustain that aircraft up in the air as well. Also, this design right here is known as a heavy lifter. Uh, it can carry to up to about 15 pound payload. Uh, with the FAA rules, the most that I could fly is anything 55 pound or less. That includes the aircraft, the battery, and its payload itself. What got you into this? Why, why would you choose to you know, design or get this uh, heavy lifting drone? That's a good question. I honestly started off as a sports photographer for uh, motorsports and other activities. Um, to be really honest, I was not into the drone at that point. Oh, I see. But then, and then somehow some of my friends actually swayed me taking a look at drones mm -hmm. and I saw the benefit from it. Not only just from a photography, videography side for news and creative shots, mm -hmm. but more into the industrial side. I saw an, uh, I saw an opportunity and I really focused on it. Uh, I've been with drones for about five years now, and uh, I've been a SUAS thermographer for three years, which I'm certified by FLAIR. So I can do primarily more inspections and doing things like search and rescue, looking for any type of anomalies on power lines, solar panels, and so on. Oh. So that's the reason why I went with a larger bird, because of the sensors, redundancy, and um, it just looks cool. It's more versatile as well, right? You can do Abs a lot more jobs. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> just changing the sensors or use the same sensors. I see. What's your favorite part about flying this drone? What makes it so special? Uh, the flying part, uh, unfortunately, the, in the real world, when you're doing a, uh, a, a mission, Typically, I would fly maybe about 10 to up to 30 minutes. Uh, but in my job, most of the time is spent analyzing the data. I see. So once I collect the data, then it's 
most of my time is devoted into analyzing. So the only time I really get to fly on it is when I create the mission, set the mission up, um, I leave it on autonomous flight. Basically means I just tell the aircraft, go up 100 feet, go 200 yards out, turn around, come back, I and see. it will do it by itself without so me touching the controls. the drone is basically, it can do its own job. You just it, simply program the mission and it'll do it basically. Exactly. It's almost like it's, you can consider it as an AI. Ah, that's quite fascinating. Well, thank you very much, Alvin. I hope you have a great day and I can't wait to see the drone fly again soon. I'm here with Will from the Pleasant Hill Library. He's here with a virtual reality booth. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. How are you? Uh, I'm doing awesome. So it's all, so many awesome things that we're doing here today. Can you tell us a little bit about virtual reality and the booth that you set up? Yeah, so we are here with the Oculus Rift system and two Go sets so people can try out virtual reality. We have just a few of the um, normal programs like the Introductory Explorer program and we have like a roller coaster going on in one of them. Um, just lots of really cool things so that people can and experience virtual reality. I see. So what does the Pleasant Hill Library have to do with this, this virtual reality program? We applied for a grant to get these in our library mm -hmm. um, and we got it. So yeah, we just want to have everybody try it out. I see. What's your favorite part about virtual reality? I really like um, the different uh, experiences like there's one with Google Earth where you can fly around and see different cities around the world. Mm, I see. Awesome. Yeah. And what do you think the future holds for virtual reality? Why do you think it's important to showcase it at Tinkers and Thinkers? I do think that a lot more experiences are going to be involving virtual reality where you're going to be having it, um, you know, just more enmeshed in everyday life. So this is just the beginning. I'm here with Peter Kim, uh, president of Robotics Club, uh, Falcon X Robotics at College Park. So can you tell me a little bit about your club? Yeah, so we're the Robotics Club and we try to provide an opportunity for kids to get hands-on engineering experience while they're in high school. And so we um, participate in international competitions and in the off-season we build little projects around robots. And what kind of community outreach do you do? Um, we try to do as much uh, event, as many events as possible. So like this year today, uh, we're at a um, Tinkers and Thinkers. We do a lot of elementary STEM fairs and um, public events. Uh, right. can, uh, can you tell me a little bit about your robot and uh, the competition that you built it for? Yeah, so this year, um, this is a 2018 robot. This year's competition included, um, involved maneuvering the yellow cube and placing it in different areas in the field. And so this robot, has a gra rolly grabber that can grab the cube, and then you have an elevator that can um, place the cube at different heights. All right, and uh, what is the competition that you built this for? Uh, it's FRC, it's the first robotics competition. It's an international competition um, that, yeah, that's for high school students.
I'm here with the general manager of Rec and Park, Michelle Lacey. Michelle, how are you doing today? I'm great. Thank you very much. So can you give us a brief rundown of Tinkers and Thinkers, um, just what's going on this year? Uh, Tinkers and Thinkers is uh, a great event that we have um, lots of hands-on activities for youth. We have uh, building, building stations like rockets and uh, brush bots and uh, we bring lots of uh, community together to, uh, to explore all things science, technology, engineering and math related. Awesome. So obviously Rec and Park and Pleasant Hill in conjunction, we spent a lot of time setting up this event, putting it together. How does Pleasant Hill benefit from this event? How does Rec and Park benefit from this event? Uh, well, uh, well, yeah, you're right about the time. It takes us about a year in the planning. Uh, we start right after the last event last year. And uh, the community and Rec and Park specifically benefits uh, because we get to bring people out to the beautiful park. Uh, we get to start, we get to teach kids uh, and families the importance of, uh, of using math in their everyday. Um, and we really get uh, an opportunity to, uh, to show off all of the cool things that happen here in Pleasant Hill and why people want to be here in Pleasant Hill. The turnout has never been higher. It's always going up. And and the event is bigger than ever. What's your favorite part about Tinkers and Thinkers? Anything specific? Uh, my favorite part is the build your own and then launch your rockets. Uh, that's my favorite part. Um, but I really also just love uh, and really enjoy watching all of the kids, uh, all the uh, they're being able to um, to smile mm -hmm. and all their parents they are helping them and all the hands-on activities because sometimes we have a lot of uh, activities where kids don't get to touch things um, and so having an activity where all the kids get to touch everything here I think is one of the coolest things we have awesome so in how as the general manager how would you view the second year as being a, a bigger success than the first year what would you be most proud of as supervising the activities? Um, well, I'm most proud uh, of the fact that um, we have activities for all ages, um, from kids that are itty bitty, like one and two, all the way up to teenagers. Um, and everyone's really engaged in the event. Um, and I think we did a much better job of that this year than last year. Um, and so um, that's what I'm most proud of. And I'm, uh, the other thing that I'm really proud of is just the team of people working with the library um, and all the other community groups to make this uh, event happen, because Wreck and Park couldn't do it on its own. Awesome. And so this concludes another fabulous Tinkers and Thinkers Fair here at the Pleasant Hill Park. The crowds keep getting bigger and bigger and there are more and more attractions every single year. Izzy, what do you think about Tinkers and Thinkers? Well, I love the community feel and I love seeing my classmates, especially my robotics team. And it was just all in all a lovely event. So you've been doing this since uh, Tinkers and Thinkers was back at the library and you've seen a lot of change. Uh, what did you think of this event uh, this year? Well, Izzy, Tinkers and Thinkers is actually called Night of a Thousand Inventions and honestly, the library events were very nice, but they were just confined to, you know, just the little library and it was a really nice community feel, but the events were a little limited. And now, years later, it's at the Pleasant Park and then now I can see thousands of people and it's wonderful. There's just so many new things. I love all the new technology, especially with the virtual reality we saw inside as well as the drones on the outside. Some re returning events include the paper rockets. It's all wonderful.
And I'm looking forward to see you all next time. I'm Samuel Chen. And I'm Izzy Triana.